The White Rose and the Red Rose by Margaret MacDonald Macintosh was created in 1902. Margaret worked with her husband, famous Scottish architect Charles Rennie Macintosh, during the transitional period coming out of the Victorian era at the beginning of the Art Nouveau movement. Most of her works were large wall panels, and the original of this image currently hangs above the fireplace in the famous white drawing room of their home in Glasgow, Scotland. MacDonald made several gesso panels for interiors, and the panels were made in the method similar to making wall frescoes, where plaster was layered onto a support such as wood, and then finished with piped plaster in linear relief, paint, and sometimes set with various inexpensive things like twine, shells, and embroidery beads. The, there is a version of this work which uses more blue in place of much of the green beads. Reproductions of the White Rose was, were commissioned in Scotland and done by Di Bond in the 1990s for the recreation of the Macintosh home in the Hunterian Art Gallery at the University of Glasgow. Prints of the reproduction closely resemble Margaret's work and are also available. However, close inspection shows distinct differences, particularly in the facial details as well as in color. The modern reproductions show more finessed features. I personally like Margaret's original work the best. The Project A chance meeting with Jan Bentley, a Kansas City and with a love for all things Macintosh, and a student of local architecture began this project. She wanted a copy of Margaret's work to hang in her home. She had the idea to purchase a print of the white rose and the red rose and have someone add embellishments to match the style of the original work. And she asked me. Testing. Once the print was in my studio, I tested a variety of materials to simulate Margaret's process which involved gesso and plaster panels. Gesso and plaster would not adhere to the printed canvas, so I tried various acrylic mediums by small test patches on the narrow strips of canvas on the back side along the stretcher bars. Next, I painted approximately 40 yards of 2 mm and 3 mm natural hemp with acrylic paint mixed with fluid matte medium to match the pale mauve lines as well as some dark green for both lines and knots. Adhesive. Gel matte medium and fluid matte medium in a 50-50 mix was my adhesive as well as sealant applied with a needle pointed bottle. Adding string. The next step was adhering cords to all the raised lines of the image. The painted hemp was glued directly onto the canvas. Tiny straight pins were required to hold the cords in place as they dried on the curves especially. The adhesive mixture was piped from a small needle tip squeeze bottle onto the lines. Cord was placed and a small brush used to bring the adhesive up and over along the length of the cord. So glue was surrounding and sealing the string to the canvas. This adhesive mixture dries completely matte and invisible and seemed to suck back under the cords, leaving no lumps. This worked well except when it resulted in many tiny holes in the cords from the pins, which were later pinched, closed, or filled. The large abalone bits were glued in place at the top, left and right, with cords over the top. Once the pins were removed, I went back with adhesive to tighten any loose spots and fill gaps under the cords. The process of adding cords took several days. Sometimes cords were overlapped, sometimes cut and butted up into each other. Most cord was pre-painted, but some raw hemp was used in the green dress area and on the large red roses and then tint added with the brush later. This color soaked in more, but it looked right. Several close reviews of the strings found gaps between the cut ends where lines overlapped or butted, as well as various pinholes that were too obvious. These were all filled with the piping gel used later and painted to match when the gel dried. Knots. Green and white painted cord was tied into knots of various sizes. The cut ends were touched up and then each was dipped into acrylic gloss medium, dried, and eventually glued onto the canvas using pins as needed. Additional layers of glue were added to fill the gaps. Colors were corrected using white, ecru, or raw umber paint using a photocopy of the print as my guide. 
adding textures and raised areas. A mix of two-part matte molding paste and three parts gel matte medium was used with tints of pink, red, or white to pipe the large floral sections, plus any additional raised areas. Large flowers were piped into place using tiny parchment pastry bags and a palette knife to spread as needed, sometimes using two colors together. I also went over all areas of the canvas image and used white piping mix to add small blobs where they were obvious on the image for dimensionality. The tiny points of gel were pushed flat with a wet palette knife or finger. These were all later painted, glazed, highlighted, or touched up with paint or acrylic wash, so they were not just raw gel matte white. Most areas of pipe flowers required several passes of color correction with acrylic washes. The raw white roses were warmed up with the raw umber wash quickly wiped off. Each process took several days as things needed to dry between steps. Finally, I glazed the entire canvas with the same gel fluid medium mix plus sterile water to thin it a bit. Adding beads. The larger four millimeter red, cream, and gray beads in the hair and green dress areas were first strung onto natural tan waxed Irish linen cord and then stitched onto the canvas at each end with a knot going into the back. Using a couching stitch on both sides of each bead with an extra fine beading line and a tiny needle, these tiny stitches hold both the linen cord and each bead exactly in place. This same nearly invisible cord was used for additional beads added singly or in groups to match all the bead placements in the image. Three mother of pearl oval beads were added in the center of the green dress as leaves. A large light blue topaz from the customer was used in the green lady's hair and at the customer's request a tiny Christian fish charm was painted green and added into a rose at the lower center. In all 150 beads were used, 78 four millimeter bone beads in red, cream, and gray plus a 10 millimeter pearl earring, various four and two millimeter green jade, glass, and pearl beads. 38 seed beads were added, mostly dark matte green, olive, gray, and pink in sizes ranging from an eight to a very tiny size 15 bead. Additionally, a little bit of adhesive was added under some beads to make sure nothing was loose. Adding these fine details was the most fun and satisfying part of this project. Finishing. Since the goal was simply to add the texture and dimensional feeling of the original work, altering of the original image was avoided in some large areas. The faces, dresses, and the large creamy, ecru, and tan areas of the image where no knots, beads, or accents were located were left with the printed canvas showing the brush strokes and the original texture of the plaster on hessian fabric, which was the basis of Margaret's panels. The image shows the original textures clearly and there was nothing added here other than a few tiny raised spots to replicate Margaret's work and covered with during the ceiling layer. Finally, the entire canvas was given an acrylic sealing coat of UV protective spray. I learned a great deal doing this and I truly miss having these lovely ladies living in my studio with me. My notes on each step will be very helpful if I do another project like this and since Jan has become a friend I will be able to visit the white rose and the red rose.